Now I'm definitely a big fan of that Nokia 5.3, which is one of the best sub £200 budget smartphones to pop out in 2020, especially if you love yourself a bit of stock Android action. So unsurprisingly, my nipples went all tingly when HMD unleashed the phone's successor, this fresh new Nokia 5.4, which you can have yourself for just 159 quid here in Blighty. Now admittedly, quite a lot of the specs and features on the Nokia 5.4 are similar, if not quite the same as the Nokia 5.3, but HMD Global has upgraded that rear camera tech slapping a fresh new 48 megapixel sensor on the arse end. So the question is, is the Nokia 5.4 a worthy successor to the 5.3 and should you be spending your hard earned money on it? Well, I've had my SIM slapped in here for the best part of a week and here's my in-depth Nokia 5.4 review. And for more of the latest, greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, when comparing with the older Nokia 5.3, this new handset has actually shrunk a little bit in size, down from 6.55 inches to 6.39. But the Nokia 5.4 is far from compact, it's still a proper wide boy thanks to those chunky bezels. And there's even enough space for the Nokia logo down below, which is a rare sight these days and definitely not in a good way. So yeah, using the Nokia 5.4 one-handed in particularly easy, that's for damn sure, especially when you're trying to like type a message, something like that. There's no dedicated one-handed mode on here because it's basically stock Android, but you can at least drag that notifications bar down from anywhere on screen, which definitely helps, or by using that rear-mounted fingerprint sensor as well. However, I did actually quickly deactivate that fingerprint sensor gesture support because I found I was constantly brushing the sensor by accident just when generally using the phone, which quickly became rather tiresome. That shiny arse end is a piece of smooth plastic that flexes slightly under pressure and we have got some light scratching down towards that bottom end as well, so you might want to slap a protective case on it. Sadly, unlike a lot of other budget blowers, the Nokia 5.4 does not come with a bundled condom case, so you're going to have to spunk out some extra cash if you want to get a case. Got to say though, I'm liking the two colour options. This right here is the moodily titled Dusk model and I reckon it looks pretty bloody snazzy. Or you can also do the Nokia 5.4 in Polar Night, which is just as lovely, or at least it looks it in the marketing pics. As far as the software goes on the Nokia 5.4, it's a case of good news and bad news. So the good news to start with is that it's a beautifully stock version of Android on here because it is actually an Android One handset, so it's completely unencumbered with any clunky launches. However, the bad news is that this is old Android 10 still, so you're missing out on some tidy little updates like the much improved notifications bar. Manufacturer HMD is keen to point out that the Nokia 5.4 is Android 11 ready, uh, so I don't know whether that means it's Boris Johnson style oven ready, in which case it might be coming in a few months time, or if it's actually ready ready, which means it might be here next week. Hopefully sooner rather than later. And you will actually be getting an Android 12 update on the Nokia 5.4 as well. HMD has already confirmed that, as well as monthly security updates for the following three years. Although right now the Nokia 5.4 is still sat on that December security update, uh, not the latest one. Thankfully, beyond the whiff of that stale OS, the everyday experience on the Nokia 5.4 is generally likeable. I really like that neat, clean stock presentation of Android, even if it means you miss out on some bonus bits found on other budget blowers like a proper gaming mode, which definitely always comes in handy. That said, you do get an Android Extra in the form of a face unlock option, which is sometimes handy if your fingers are covered in gloop. Although I'll lop off my John Thomas and use it as a draft excluder if that facial recognition isn't slower than an asthmatic tortoise, especially in more ambient light. I've got to admit, I tend to just stick to that rear mounted fingerprint sensor, which does the job nicely, although once again isn't particularly swift get there in the end. I do have to mourn about a few other things unfortunately here on the Nokia 5.4 as is my god-given right as a grumpy British prick and the first thing I've got to direct some ire at is that edge mounted assistant button. It's mostly pointless thanks to the many other ways of calling up the Google Assistant and while you can at least disable the thing there's no way to configure it to actually do something useful. It's basically the button equivalent of Mrs Brown's boys just just kill it just kill it with fire. And over the last couple of days, I've also had some issues connecting to a mobile network, or rather specifically, I can connect to a network for calls and texts and things, but actually getting a data connection seems to be near on impossible at times. And obviously right now it's not really a major issue because I'm pretty much stuck at home full time using my Wi-Fi. But obviously once I start going out and about again, if that's still going to be an issue, then that's when it turns into a really big problem. And also this past week, the Nokia 5.4 handset has reset itself three times for bugger all reasons seemingly. I reckon it's probably just given up on life as hard as the rest of us. The Nokia 5.4 matches most other budget smartphones when it comes to other features, including NFC support here in the UK and a dual SIM setup. You even get a separate micro SD slot to expand the 64 or 128 gigs of storage space 
when needed. And that's something that a lot of flagship phones are doing away with these days, the cheeky buggers, but it's good to see a lot of budget smartphones still supporting it. Now, the Nokia 5.4's display is very similar to that older 5.3 panel, despite shrinking a wee bit. It's another IPS screen with HD plus resolution, not full HD sadly, so yeah, you do miss out on finer details when you're watching a bit of Netflix or checking out your photo collection. If you want a full HD display, then you'll have to check out some alternatives, the likes of the Poco X3 NFC or the Poco M3 for instance. But I still enjoyed wasting a morning or whiling away a sleepless night with some flicks or shows, but definitely don't expect any lush visuals here, no poppy colours or eye-pleasing shenanigans to be had. It's a functional screen that does the job just fine, no more, no less. The viewing angles are a little bit narrow, so it's not ideal for watching something with a mate, but it's more than possible. As for the brightness levels, well, bump it all the way up to that maximum level. If I can see it all right in a sort of a fairly overcast day, although when it gets to summertime and it gets really sunny and bright, fingers crossed, uh, you might be struggling a bit more. On the sound front, that mono speaker is all right for watching some YouTube or whatever, but it is more of a last resort. You'll definitely want to plug in some headphones using the handy jack, or stream some audio via Bluetooth, which worked just fine for me. This past week, I've experienced just a single judder when streaming audio via Bluetooth from the Nokia 5.4 to a wide variety of speakers, true wireless earbuds, proper over-ear headphones, the works. Although be warned that it is the older Bluetooth 4.2 standard here on the Nokia 5.4 for some reason, rather than the fresher 5, so it does have a shorter range, not a fantastic range, but not too terrible, and also it offers less features as well. As for the performance, well, HMD has slapped a Snapdragon 662 chipset backed by either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM inside of this bad boy. This is the 4 gig of RAM version and I found it works out absolutely fine. It's a slight upgrade over the older Snapdragon 665 which you found in the Nokia 5.3, though some of the new features of the 662 aren't supported in here like that fresher Bluetooth. And the 662 is basically the exact same platform you'll find in a lot of other budget-friendly rivals under 200 quid, the likes of that Poco M3, the Moto G9 series. And I found that the everyday performance here on the Nokia 5.4 was about the same as those Motorola phones but better than the Poco M3, probably helped along by the stock Android vibes here. You've got that same ever-dependable Adreno 610 GPU in here which means gaming on a budget is not a problem. Call of Duty and other fast-paced online titles run perfectly with a smooth frame rate, while the screen responsiveness is dependable enough for those split-second frantic moments when you're trading gunfire with some wee jizz mop who just won't stop bouncing about the place. The only thing missing here is a dedicated gaming mode for blocking notifications, freeing up resources, yada yada. Now when it comes to battery tech, you've got a 4000 milliamp capacity cell crammed into the Nokia 5.4, which is considerably dinkier than a lot of rivals like the Poco M3, the Moto G9 Power, which rock a mighty 6 thousand milliamp cell instead. But frankly though, good luck killing this thing before you're all tucked up with Teddy at night because seriously, I tried all kinds of stuff on this. I tried Skyping my family for like an hour, playing with the camera tech loads, playing games, streaming far too much anime on the bloody thing, and I really could not get it below about 20% by the time I finally staggered into bed at night. And yeah, that 10 watt charging tech ain't exactly super nippy by any means, but it's pretty much standard for a budget blower. So as you can see, there's a few little changes over that Nokia 5.3 here and there, but the main upgrade is that camera tech, or rather the primary sensor, which has bumped up from a basic 13 megapixel effort to a 48 megapixel affair. This is a quad pixel shooter, which captures 12 megapixel images, and the results are a step up, if not a massive one. The Nokia 5.4 can handle strong light without shredding its skimpies, although sharp contrast can be a pain, and the camera does still struggle indoors with soft grainy results sometimes. Still in pretty good light and you'll enjoy respectable levels of detail even when you blow photos right up, as well as natural looking colours, and even moving subjects are usually captured with only a little blur thanks to the fast shutter speed. You do also have the option of shooting at that maximum 48 megapixel resolution here on the Nokia 5.4 if you want, but to be honest this only really works well in perfect spot on lighting, otherwise you get slightly weaker colours and some other issues creeping in, so frankly I'd just leave it on those default settings. In low light, the Nokia 5.4's night mode lends a hand, capturing a brighter photo while tempering those lighter elements, as long as you've got a steady hand that is. Photos are noticeably warmer when using this mode however, so it's not perfect. And of course, HMD has also crammed three other lenses onto that arse end, including a fairly basic 5 megapixel ultra wide angle effort. This is fine for grabbing a pulled out view of proceedings, although you can expect a drop in detail and a darker overall image. Meanwhile, the depth sensor can help to produce some great looking portrait snaps with accurate separation of the background from your subject. And you can tweak that bokeh effect after you've taken each snap to make it stronger, weaker, or a bit more like psychedelic butterflies. Just don't ask. 
And yay, verily, there also be a macro lens on the back end here, bringing up the total to four. Woo, and indeed who. As usual, this is mostly just annoying to use. If you don't get the distance just right, your photo will end up being a bit blurry or fuzzy, so you're best off just using that primary lens and then cropping in. For your video shenanigans, you can shoot at full HD resolution at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and unfortunately, this is where the Nokia 5.4 starts to properly stumble. I noticed that a lot of focus pop in my test videos, while the visuals were generally drab and grainy, especially when switching to the ultra-wide angle lens. As with the photo mode, any indoor clips will look proper soft too but at least the audio was cleanly picked up with only the occasional bit of vocal distortion or a random pop that I couldn't identify. You've also got a cinema mode which switches the aspect ratio to 21 by 9 and drops the frame rate to 24 fps while serving up a variety of filters, some better than others. You still get the same video issues though, so the value here is kind of questionable. And HMD has also upgraded the selfie shooter on the Nokia 5.4 as well, so now you get a 16 megapixel effort instead of the 8 megapixel sensor found on the older one. And this can capture good looking pics with optional portrait blur. Those portrait shots are actually my favourites, offering stronger detail and more natural skin tones compared with the standard auto mode, although indoor shots are still soft as out and definitely do not even bother in low light. So that's what I think of the Nokia 5.4 after using it as my full-time smartphone for almost a week. And I've got to say, not loving it quite as much as that Nokia 5.3 when I first got to grips with it, probably because there's such tough competition now in that budget realm. The likes of Realme, Xiaomi, Poco, all these great manufacturers are pumping out fantastic sub £200 budget smartphones these days. So definitely the Nokia 5.4 with its handful of issues around like shooting video and uh, the mobile connection and all that kind of stuff makes me hesitant to recommend it. But if any of you guys also been using the Nokia 5.4 as your full-time handset, it'd be great to hear your own mini review down in the comments below. Please do pog subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!